letter spacing or tracking. This is one of the things I see aspiring new UI designers get wrong almost all the time. I, we're gonna go over a couple examples in which I think you should avoid using def uh, anything other than default letter spacing or the tracking, and then also several examples in ways you can actually use extended letter spacing and also opposite of extended and just negative tracking as well. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Oh, also don't forget here at designcourse.com in 13 days from the release of this video, January 4th of 2022, 2022 rather, are releasing designcourse.com, which is an excellent, most comprehensive way to learn UI UX design. So if you're looking at this video before that release date, make sure to enter your email to be notified when it releases. And then if not, make sure to join. All right, let's get started. All right, so before we begin about ways to effectively use tracking or letter spacing, um, I wanna talk about a way in which not to use it. And this is an example right here. So what exactly looks off or wrong about this particular design? I'll give you a second to think about it. It is this right here. And if we look over here after selecting it, we could see right here for letter spacing or your tracking section, we have 4%. So it's been removed from its default and we're extending the letter spaces out slightly by 4% and this looks bad. So if we take the same example right here and we change this just to zero, which defaults it back to the default position, this is looking so much better. It's so much easier to read, yet I see new designers, aspiring designers in their portfolio and their work in general, sometimes they'll take almost every paragraph uh, in their CSS class and just give it extended letter spacing and I'm telling you about 99% of the times that's something you don't want to do, especially with fonts that are very popular and well curated um, and not just like, you know, your brother made a font or something. Maybe that would need extended letter spacing. So that's one thing I want you to take you know note of. If you're a new designer, don't mess with the, the, the tracking. Don't mess with, mess with the letter spacing, especially when it comes to paragraphs of text. It just makes it much more difficult to understand. So um, one example here uh, that I'm gonna show you, the first example is going to be uh, based on this example right here. All right, so everything's looking good, but one way in which we can really create that typographic visual hierarchy between uh, this element and this element, which it already has a lot. I, you know, there's a couple things changed first, well, they are both bold. The only thing changed is just the scale between the two. So this is this is working well, but if you wanna further reinforce that, you can also use uh, extended letter spacing um, in conjunction with something else. So let me just give you an example. So we're gonna take uh, this right here and we're going to apply just a bit of extended letter spacing to like 13%. This doesn't look good in and, of, in and of itself. Um, this only starts to look good if we take the type and we go to properties and we click on the uppercase. Now this in and of itself, it's not too bad. If we look at the size, it's at 18. Maybe it might be better to make it a little bit smaller, 16, because just, just by nature of uppercasing everything, everything becomes larger. So dialing it back a bit, this works. I also like for this sort of thing, and this also works with like uh, tags, when you're adding tags to like a, an article post or something like that, or maybe technology tags on your coding portfolio, I uh, we could take this container here and we can send it to back, maybe give it a little bit of border radius, get things evened up here. Also wanna make sure it's aligned correctly, right there. And what we can do is give it maybe a subtle background color. Or what we could do is make it a really light gray, which works with this context of this design. Or if you want to integrate color, which further increases the, the difference or the visual hierarchy between these two elements, we can give it color. So maybe we can come out here. All right, so if we compare, for instance, let's get this one out of here. This element or this design with this design 
you can see this one has, I, it just has a, a, a larger uh, visual hierarchy or vis visual hierarchical difference between um, these two elements and these two elements. All right, so another way that you can commonly use extended letter spacing, um, let's just go ahead and take this design here and we'll drag this out into more of like a desktop frame and Let's go ahead and take this. We're gonna change this to Playfair Display SC. It's just like a real elegant sort of um, sans serif font. So if we take this here in the middle and then we'll take this type, we'll center that as well, get it text aligned center. Um, let's go ahead and use um, a, a sans serif font pairing. So we have a serif up top and a, a sans serif down here. We'll use Poppins and we'll scale it down to 16 or so and change that to zero and then also increase this a little bit. All right, so now it's looking pretty good right there. Now let's make this a lot larger. So let's try like 60 or so. And let's bring, let's just delete that. We'll duplicate this. And in the center, let's just say we have kind of like a subheading uh, masterful design or something like that. Just think it off the top of my head. Um, let's try 24 for that. So we could leave this as is, but if we really wanna make it appear quite elegant, we could really increase the letter spacing quite a bit and even make this smaller now. So we can go down to maybe 18. And then the smaller you make it, the further you can increase all the way up to 83% on that letter spacing, and it really just has a nice aesthetic to it. It makes it feel sophisticated and elegant. So that's another way in which you can use. Now, I will say this, you don't wanna to add too many words because then it just starts to look strange. You can only do this, in my opinion, with one to two words, maybe three if they're shorter words. Anything more than that, it becomes way too difficult to read. Um, here's another example in which we could use extended letter spacing, and then this is in the context of a watermark, which essentially you could do any, you can make anything a watermark. Um, let's let's reverse situations here. We'll go dark, and we'll, then we'll go ahead and take this, all this stuff, and we'll go white, and then let's say we want a large, we'll just say UI UX back watermark in the background. And then we could of course also extend the letter spacing on that. So let's try like 500. And let's right click, send it back, and then also get the fill situated here. We wanna make it a watermark, so we grab the, the color it's currently on and we just either drag it up or down. There we go, it's very subtle, I love that. And of course, you could go ahead and take this letter spacing, or the tracking section, up as well. So it looks really cool. I like that sort of aesthetic. You can push it up or down and position however you wish. Now another example or final example of letter spacing is, is this time we're gonna take it opposite. We're gonna push it in. We're gonna have negative letter spacing or tracking. Um, for that, let's go ahead and replicate this one more time and we'll go ahead and grab um, yeah this. We're gonna change. This. Now this particular thing works well with really bold thick font weights. So Poppins has a black font weight. And let's go ahead and say we have a headline that says, let's get bold. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna take this stuff. We'll move this over here for a second. And this also works uh, best with really large text, really bold text. So let's put this up to like 120. That might be a little bit too big. Let's just do 100. And let's also put them on their own lines. Now this looks bad. <laughs> so we're gonna have negative line height or letting, uh, and then also negative letter spacing or tracking as well. So let's get them up close with each other and also left align them. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, get this. You can get it to the point where it's touching. It gives you kind of an interesting aesthetic. Now here, here comes the negative letter spacing. We can push these in as well. And it almost creates sort of like a, a, a graphic design. It's, it becomes its own little illustration just in how big and, and, and bold it is. And because it's really large type, it's gonna work anyways. It's gonna be readable. So that's not even a concern. So then we could do something like, for instance, just to finish off this design, I. Uh, Wow, they're almost the same height, which is pretty cool. 
Um, we'll go ahead and take, maybe we'll have a, look, a little bit of a line separator here going to the height of everything. And then we can put this here and then maybe increase the letting. And look at that. Now we can take this, push that down, and there you go. So just to reiterate, you want to avoid having slightly extended letter spacing or even any letter spacing outside of the font's typical letter spacing. Again, unless you're dealing with some type of strange font that hasn't been developed well. Uh, going, let's change that to zero. So you wanna avoid this and you wanna do this. Just leave it at the default letter spacing. Um, next up right here, you can use letter spacing with simple short words and no more than probably two to three max. Uh, and, and it has a nice aesthetic and it's one way to increase that typographic visual hierarchy between elements. Uh, you can use it to have subheadings as well. It really works well in, in elegant designs like uh, sans serif fonts as well. Um, you could also use it obviously in backgrounds uh, as uh, uh, watermark based backgrounds, typographic. And then also you can even go the opposite route and push them in with big thick font weights. All right, everybody, hopefully you found that interesting. I know that was a very niche specific topic as it pertains to topography, but of course, all of these little tips and tricks really will culminate in helping you become a really good UI designer. So as always, check out designcourse.com. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.